WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com. We have a brand new sponsor of our segment with Bob Pollock. It is Evansburg Equipment. Have you heard about the TYM 2515 tractor? It's a full-feature compact tractor that's made for landscapers, hobby farmers, and landowners. And through the end of 2023, get 0% interest and 84 months with the largest lift capacity in its class. Get the best incentives of the year right now by visiting tymoffers.com. Better yet, visit Evansburg Equipment in Evansburg. TYM. Our sponsor for our segment with Bob Pollock, brought to you by Ebensburg Equipment. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mac, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. So last uh, half hour, I got this thing uh, about um, warnings about our Christmas trees, things that we need to do. And I don't know if you heard this or not, but the number one thing they say we should do is shake that baby up. Before we bring it in the house because we'll dislodge any uh, not only uh, we or, or needles that are old and dried up and and on all of that but all the bugs that come with your tree as well and then they say inspect the tree with the flashlight before you buy it look for little white specks or anything that might be an egg and then it says if there's a big thing that looks like a small pine cone that could be a praying mantis egg sack with up to 200 little baby praying mantises holding a prayer meeting <laughs> in your very own living room. Uh, but what it does point out is uh, that we, we do need, before we bring the Christmas tree in, we need to look it up, don't we? It is good to look it over, just like we've talked about our uh, tropical plants and our plants that we put outside in the summer and then bring in in the winter. Um, same thing can be held true. This is a living plant. Uh, it was growing out in a field until very recently. And so, yes, taking a look at that. Now, many places that you go to purchase a tree may shake the tree. They may already have shaken the tree. Mm -hmm. So there's a little machine that, well, you can do it manually. You know, if you're feeling good and you need your exercise, you know, you can bounce it up and down and shake it. And, you're not going to do it as well as that and, vibrating and do plate, that. Though. And that's right, yeah. So they make that vibrating plate which really helps dislodge any um, old needles or dead needles that are in the tree mm -hmm. gets those out of there cleans it up uh, for the most part and and so that's a help yeah um, and, and especially if you've just cut it and, uh, right and, you know if they've had it on the lot already cut for you they've already shaken it once they've, and, they probably have and, and they might it do again. it again yeah yeah but that one you just cut that's not been shaken no it hasn't we're stirred only only vibrated a little bit when you were cutting it off with the saw, mm -hmm. um, which usually isn't enough. And and there always can be needles that can drop out. You don't want that to be excessive, of course, but mm -hmm. um, we need to remember that because it is living and growing, every year it does shed one year's, usually one year's growth of needles. So the oldest needles that are on the tree, which usually are back into the tree mm -hmm. towards the trunk, um, every year, you know, one one year's growth of needles usually falls off. Hence why we find needles on the ground. Uh -huh. uh, you know, whether the tree's in the landscape or uh, we're using it as a Christmas tree, um, that's just how it goes. We have to, there's only so many years worth of needles that the tree can hang on to mm -hmm. um, because next year, you know, the buds are there already for next year to put out a new set of growth um, and then that will replace the, the oldest set of growth. Occasionally, if, if trees get into a stressful situation during the growing season um, in the fall, they, they might drop off two years' worth. Uh, but usually we have to have a, you know, a drought or some significant event that stresses that tree uh, for that to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, get those out of there. Sometimes there's some weeds growing up through there or remnants uh, thereof that you can pull out. Occasionally you might find a vine or two. Um, that were growing up in there that were camouflaged, you know, because they were mm -hmm. they were green and um, until they die and start to dry down, you don't even notice that they're necessarily in there. I read this week uh, of a family whose Christmas tree had been up for a few days um, and they found a baby owl in it. Um, I was going to say 
about shaking the squirrel out. Yeah, but, but there was this baby owl that wasn't disturbed at all. It was just sitting there. It looked like an ornament. Uh, but but that's something to check out, too, uh, before you bring something like that into the house. Well, is, are the there other critters thing, up in there? Right. And the other thing you might find are bird's nests. That's, mm-hmm. you know, that's a possibility. And sometimes even shaking the tree might not dislodge a nest that would be in there. Now, most likely there won't be any live birds in there, but um, just the remnants of the nest. Um, occasionally, there can be uh, mites that are associated with birds and, and birds' nests. That mm-hmm. um, There still could be some bird mites. They call them bird mites. Uh, very, very tiny little creatures that, uh, insects that, you know, can be in there. But, you know, t- yeah. removing that nest will solve that problem. They say they uh, the things you could shake out of that tree, mites, aphids, bark beetles, moths, spiders, weevils, and praying mantises. And they say if you knock some uh, egg sacs off of that tree, don't squish them or that would release their eggs. I say when you squish the egg mass, don't you squish the egg too and have scrambled bug eggs? Um, But they say to vacuum them up instead. Or, you know, you can remove them and just put them back outside. You know, of course, the praying mantises, uh, those are a beneficial insect, so... We, you know, you can take that mass, mm-hmm. um, which is just like a little piece of brown foam, you know, stuck on the branch. It's really what it looks like. Yeah. And pretty kind of porous looking and everything. But, you know, take that off um, and you could actually, you know, put that back out in the landscape. Uh, and then you might have some praying mantises next year to mm-hmm. look for. All right. So a little Christmas tree precaution mm-hmm. for you. As you get that tree in, because last weekend, this weekend, those are the big weekends. And right, and and remember, even, you know, spiders. Okay, spiders. We have spiders around. They're everywhere. Everywhere. Um, so that's really, to me, not a big deal because mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, they're and they're not going to harm you anyway. Um, and then aphids. Um, yeah, occasionally those can be on there, and they would still be live and functioning at this point too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And for the most part, again, they'll probably pretty much stay where they are. Mm -hmm. And really a little bit of insecticidal soap, you know, just spraying a little soap on there will help to control those. So Uh you could treat those in place if you wanted to. They're pretty tough to, um, you know, if the tree's outside, you can hose that off in that spot. And usually they would get you know, there'll be one place or another yeah. kind of group together and not all over the... Well, folks might not know what they're looking for either. No. Uh, and they might not know the size of something. They might figure that it's it's going to be like the size of your fingernail. Um, and it's not. It's going no. to be much smaller much than that. Um, a fingernail is maybe stink bug sized, uh, whereas um, uh, an aphid, uh, for ants, for example, or, or a small, tiny little mite, um, tiny is the word. There. Yes, they, they're very, very tiny yeah. and hard to see. Like almost like a dot, you know. If you take a pencil or a pen and make a dot on a piece of paper, yeah. they well, can be that size said, or use, smaller. Use that white sheet of paper. Yeah, yeah, um, and use the right. You can do that. Just jostle you know, and branch mo- up. And most down. beetles. Um, I mean, there are several different beetles that can attack trees. We used to have more chance of that when we were had a lot of scotch pine because um, there were a number of different beetles that would attack scotch pine. Mm-hmm. Um, but often those, and there are weevils as well, those tend to really very easily drop off the tree. So if they were on a tree, as soon as you come up near it, one of their response mechanisms is just to, they just act like they're dead, and they literally drop off the tree. Really? And, yeah, to the ground. Because I always heard that weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for that. <laughs> Thanks for the setup, Bob. I appreciate but, that very you know, much. Basically, basically, if you do find those, it's all you can deal with it pretty easily. Uh, it's not a big deal, and all right, be on your way and keep that tree watered. Keep the tree watered, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's you know, and that's the the best thing and the biggest thing we need to do uh, is just to. Keep it watered, that keeps, because it will still hold on to that moisture, and it'll do so for long enough um, that we're going to have it in our 
Yeah, you're talking and, a manner of weeks, use, not months. Yeah. So yep. you're, you're good with that. Yeah, and there are people that have tried to see how long they can keep their tree in their house, mm -hmm. you know, without the needles drying up and falling off. And it literally can be months until that happens. Yeah. All right. So there you go. A little Christmas tree talk for you here this morning on Indiana in the morning. Now, as long as we're talking about checking for mites and bugs, let's just take a look at the conditions of those plants that we brought in two months ago when the weather started turning colder and those outdoor plants that were out on the patio or wherever you happen to have them, they're now living indoors for a few months. And, uh, and uh, what are some of the things that we should be looking for them now that they've been acclimated to the indoors? And re really just looking at, is it the plant, the color that it's supposed to be? Um, or does it look like it's supposed to, you know, versus the leaves drooping or are you starting to get some uh, browning on some leaf edges, uh, which could indicate either humidity or moisture? Um, trying to just get better handle on, well, how often do I need to water this plant? You know, feeling the soil, actually sticking your finger in the soil to see if it's dry on top or is it moist all the way down through, mm -hmm. and then just adjusting your schedule for watering to, to compensate for that. Everybody's house will, can be a little bit different and and where you have plants sited and whether they're grouped or not. And oftentimes we will try to group plants together just to help mm -hmm. hold humidity a bit um, and kind of create a, a better environment for the plants. Does a plant's need for light change as the season goes on? Not really. I mean, if it's a plant that needs full sun all day long, it will need full sun all day long. Mm -hmm. um, and then the biggest thing that changes is things we really, well, we can't control unless we supplement lights, you know, because the days are shorter. Mm -hmm. So they have to deal with less light. Um, but just trying to have plants sighted as close as possible to the conditions that they need. You know, if it's just bright light um, or full sun all day long, um, and maybe then for those plants that really need that full sun to really do their best. We, we try to group those together and, and provide some supplemental lighting for them uh, so that they can thrive. There you go. Hey, thanks for the visit. Again, You're welcome. Thanks for we, the opportunity. We do talk every Friday about lawns and gardens and trees and plants and insects and all of those lovely things. Uh, and here in December, that becomes a, a more focused discussion. It is Indiana in the Morning, our conversation with Bob Pollock, brought to you by Ebensburg Equipment.